There we go. All right. So just to begin, we'll start with the warm-up like you normally do. Just give yourself a little bit of room. We're going to work our way top down. If you can't hear me at any point, feel free to unmute yourself, yell out. I'll do what I can to make it a little bit clearer. So just starting with the head, just can do a nice slow head roll. So try and let it extend both shoulders as much as possible and down to the chest. Don't let it go too far back. So that can be very hard on the back of it. So just at your own pace. And then coming back around the other way. All right, I'm gonna start rolling out the shoulders with just really deep circles, jumping up as high as possible, as far back as possible. So as big a circle as you can create with your shoulders. So it's just warming it up. We're not about doing, sorry, it's not about doing it fast. It's about stretching it in each direction. And the other way. We're gonna put our, link our hands behind our head. So just palms behind the back of the head. What we're trying to do is Pull our elbows back because that's going to open up your chest and open up the pectoral muscles. So pulling the elbows back and just gently as you breathe out, turn to one side. And as you breathe in, come back to center. Out to the other side. In back to center. One more each side. Out side. Breathe in. Other side. And in. I'm going to bring the one arm across the body. Try and keep the elbow straight, the shoulder down. And I'm sorry, I know the glare on this is kind of fading all of my body parts into one. So just pulling it down, getting a nice stretch along the back of the shoulder here. And then across the other side. And just keeping your feet a little bit wide. You can do some hip circles, so just as big or as small as you feel comfortable, slower as fast as you like. We're really just focusing on getting some mobility around the hips. So if you want, you can put the feet wider, really make big circles. And back around the other way. All right. Just bring your feet together. What we're going to do is just warm up the knees a little bit. So hands on the knees, both knees feet facing forward over the toes. Just gentle forward and back. Try and keep your heels on the ground because that'll give you a nice stretch up the calves as well. So just slowly in your own time, just a very gentle motion. All right, and then we're just going to go into the ankle. So do do some calf raises. So again, Feet just underneath the hips, so they're not locked quite tight together. What you think about is keeping the knees in line with the toes and trying to press up between the big toe and the second toe as you pull up, rising up onto the toes, and control the movement down. Back onto the heels and then back up onto the balls of the feet and back down. So if you keep all your the center of your body tight and long, you like you're stretching up to the roof, that will just help keep you stable as you come up and down. If you can, try and speed it up a little bit. That's going to warm up the calves a bit more. If you need something to hold on to, that's also fine. Um, as usual, if you find anything uncomfortable or painful or awkward, feel free to modify or replace it with another exercise. You know your body better than I do. All right. Now we're just going to do some little ankle circles, just in one direction, and then back the other way. And on the other leg, so circling, nice and big. And back the other way. We're going to do a couple of roll downs. And this is just a nice way to wake up the spine and give yourself a bit of a stretch. So you're going to keep your feet, your knees together so they're, they're tight. What we're trying to do is roll each vertebrae down one at a time. The hands down the sides looks a bit easier. Feel free to watch this one first if you like. So we look up to the sky. Bring our chin down to our chest, bend our knees slightly, and then we're just going to let the top of the head try and roll down a little bit at a time towards our knees. So our arms come forward, our back has this nice long curve. We reach down towards the ground. When we reach towards the ground, 
kind of bend the knees slightly, and then from the back of the spine to the base of your bum, one vertebrae at a time, trying to peel up as if you're trying to paste yourself to a wall behind you. And so the last one to come up. So the idea is that the spine is going, curling down, and then from back to it's curling up one at a time. So it should give you a really nice long stretch of that. Again, feel free to modify the nature. If you can't go all the way down, don't worry about it, as long as you're getting a bit of a stretch. So looking up, breathe in. As you breathe out, bring the chin to the chest. The shoulders and the chest roll forward. Soften the knees. Roll down to your feet. Let your body hang. Just enjoy that stretch. You hang there. Soften the knees. And then from the base of the spine, one vertebrae at a time. Bring the arms up over the head as you breathe in. Dive the hands through and we'll go down again. Into chest, forehead towards the belly, arms dropping down towards the ground, gentle bend, and rolling it back up. Feet wide, uh, toes up to the side. Just going to bend down, so we'll give a bit of a squat uh, with our legs out to the side. And all we're going to do is just wherever you are. Try and see if you can move it a little bit side to side. So use your hands to brace you. If you want a bit more, you can push back against the knees, either with your hands, or with your elbows. What we're trying to do is open up inside hip flexors, but only go as far as you feel safe and comfortable. And then coming back out. Shake out the hands. Give them a nice firm shake, get the blood running out there. If you're outside, you're probably feeling it a little bit. Jump up and down, run on the spot, whatever it is, wake up the body a little bit. Might look a little bit crazy, I'm sure, to my neighbours and the people in the street. I look quite a bit nuts at the moment. But just live a little. All right. Okay. So now that we've got a little bit of crazy out, uh, we're just going to start going through some of the basics. So as I said on the Facebook page and on the email invite, what I'm going to do today is try and cover, just quickly going through the basics. So. Ashisbaki or footwork, our basic cuts, so Furiyaga Timen, Paso, um, we tried Furikayashi last week as well. And then what I'd like to do is look at cut number one and two, at least for the attacking role. And then what I may try and do is teach you some of the techniques that come from cut number five, but from the Uchi or the receiver's role, because some really lovely techniques in there uh, that you get to try out. And if we have time, I also want to do a little bit of what we call waza, which is basically sort of uh, techniques that you could use for attacks or counterattacks. Um, so you can try and do like, sort of blocks and an attack as well. So we're going to try and shake it up a little bit, see if we can put some of the stuff we've been working on the last several weeks together. As usual, if you have any questions, raise your voice, put up your hand, put it in the chat. Um, if I'm not hearing you or not noticing, yell it out. If you can't say anything, let me know. If you can't hear me, let me know. There are no silly questions that I have. So, that being said, grab whatever you've got. I've got the Naganada here for the moment, just because I've got the room, but don't worry, I also have the trusty broom on site for some of the other demonstrations for you as well. So, just going to start with some of our basic footwork. So, we are in Hidari Chudan, which means our left hand and our left foot are at the front. Our right hand is sitting where our leg meets our groin, and our arms are shoulder width apart. Our left foot is pointing in the same direction as our weapon. Our right foot is trying to get about 90 degrees out. Don't worry if it has to come in a little bit though. So we're going to start with okuriyashi mai. So that's just a single step. So okuriyashi mai, okuriyashi mai, okuriyashi mai, okuriyashi, going backwards, ato. Okuriyashi ato, okuriyashi ato, and again, okuriyashi mai, 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 okuriyashi ato, ato, ato. We're going to sugiyashi, which is um, bringing one foot in and then doing an okuriyashi, so little skip step. So sugiyashi mai, sugiyashi mai, sugiyashi mai, going backwards. 
to be actually at all. Again, if you don't have room, feel free to go back as you or reset them as you need to. Ayumi Ashi. So this is the walking step you always cross over first. So Ayumi Ashi. My right foot open. Right foot crosses, left foot open. Ayumi Ashi. Ato. Left foot crosses, open. Cross, open. Ayumi Ashi. My itch, ni, san, shi. Ayumi Ashi. Ato. Itch, ni. Sun, she. I'm going to face you for this next one. So this is harakiyashi, which is that stepping off onto an angle. So you, you would eventually end up doing a full circle. So remember the side that uh, we're going towards, that, um, that leg is going to move first. So if we move to the right, our right leg is going to move first. If we move to the left, our left foot is going to go first. So we're going to go right, which is midi. Migi ni harakiyashi. Migi ni harakiyashi. Hidari. Hidari ni harakiyashi. Hidari ni harakiyashi. Migi ni harakiyashi. Hidari ni harakiyashi. Hidari ni harakiyashi. Migi ni harakiyashi. So what you may have noticed is I'm still trying to maintain my the tip of my weapon, my kisaki, at that same point. So it's as if you're not moving. But I am, so I'm stepping off my so I go Migini Haraki. I'm still trying to point as if you haven't moved. Hidarini Haraki. Hidarini Haraki. Migini Haraki. Migini Haraki. Hidarini Haraki. Good. So the idea is that you're always trying to maintain your pen stem on your partner or your opponent. So you're always acting as a bit of a pressure point, a bit of a threat. You're keeping them at distance. All right, so one other one that we did last week, and I will need to show off my fine leggings for this one. Fumi Kayashi. And there it goes again. So remember, Fumi Kayashi is about being able to change sides. So in this one, we're just going to bring our hands to the center and then come back down to shoot up. So, um, Fumi Kayashi, step forward with the right, step back with the left. Fumi Kayashi, forward with the left, back with the right. Fumikayashi, forward, and Fumikayashi, forward to the left, back to the right. Good. All right, so we're going to go through our basic cuts. So starting with Kuriyagate then, just a little quick refresher again, starting in Shudan, right foot, right hand comes through, and then as the left hand and left foot come down and or forward, the right hand is coming down to just below your belly button. And your left hand is going to slide up your weapon to make the correct height. Okay? So this is the strength. Left hand or the front hand is for stopping. So, kuriyagate, meno ute, ich, ni. And then sugiyashpa. Kuriyagate, meno ute, ne. Sugiyash. Kuriyagate, meno ute, ne. Sugiyash. Kuriyagate, meno ute, we're going to do furiyagate snai. So the only difference there is that we have a slightly wider step on at the end. And our left hand is going to slide close to the right hand as the right hand comes in to your sternum. So the right hand comes up a bit further. You're trying to put your weapon between your arm and your body. And you're going to kneel in to get that leg ankle. So remember, you're coming between my ankle and my knee. So, furiyagate neo ute. We're going to go into hustle. So remember, this one means we're actually going to be changing sides. We'll be changing Kamai a lot more than you do with the other ones. So starting in Chudan, so right hand to the back, left hand forward. So bring the right hand up to the left, right hand up to the ear. So your left hand is down at the hip. As you step forward, the left hand is going to come into your sternum. So, and then we're going to sugiyashi backwards, which leaves us in migi no kumai. So, so bring the left hand up to the right, and then the right hand, sorry, the left hand up to your ear, right hand to your hip, 
right hand is going to come to your sternum. Mano with that. Mim. And Sugeshba. So the actual term for this is Sokumeno. Kanada Sokumeno. So Sokumeno, Ute, right hand comes to the center, right hand comes to the ear, left hand comes to the sternum. Mim. And Sugesh. Sokumeno Ute, left hand comes to the center, left hand comes to the ear, right hand will move to the sternum. Mim. And Sugesh. Sokumeno Ute, right hand comes to the center, right hand to the ear, left hand to the center. Mim. Sugesh. Sokumeno Ute, left hand comes to the center, left hand to the ear, right hand to your sternum. Sugesh. So that was Hustleman or Sokumen. We're now going to do Hustle Sne. Uh, and the call for this is actually Sne or Ute. So again, we're just kneeling in a little bit further. Our back arm or is going to come up a little bit higher on our chest to make that snake cut. So, Hasanokumai. Right hand to the center, right hand to the ear. Snail with that. Net. Sugiyash. Hasanokumai. So, left hand to the center, left hand to the ear. And snake. Net. And Sugiyash. Snail with that. Hands to the center, hand to the ear. Net. Sugiyash. Sneo ute, hands to the center, hand to the ear. Net. Sugiyash. One more inch at each side. Sneo ute, hands to the center, hand to the ear. Net. Sugiyash. Sneo ute, hands to the center, hand to the ear. Net. Sugiyash. Good. So, we've just done Puriyagate men, Puriyagate sne, hustle men, hustle sne. And then we've got that lovely little tricky one that we started having a look at last week. And don't worry if this one mucks up. This one is a very, very hard one to learn without having a partner showing you in person. It's very hard when you're going to have a real magnata. So don't stress. See how we go. So just to reiterate, Furi Kayashi is basically we're trying to bring both of our hands on top of our head as we bring our legs together. So in this case, I'm going to step back so my left will come back as my hands come together with my head. I'm facing forward. And now my left hand is going to slide down to the base of my naginata as I step through the right foot. So this is Furikayashi and Sugiyashi. I'm now in Miginokuma with my right hand forward. So I'm going to bring my right foot back as I bring my right hand behind my body to come and meet over the center of my head. My right hand is now going to slide down as I step forward to my left foot. Then, <coughs> Try and show you from the side. <coughs> Excuse me. So my left hand's forward. I'm going to bring my left hand and my left foot back. And so my left hand comes to me over the top of my head. Left hand slides down the nagging as I step forward. My right hand and my right leg are coming back. I'm going to meet over the center of my head. My right hand is going down as my left foot steps forward. <coughs> so again, don't stress if this is feeling a bit awkward or you're not getting it. This is a very difficult one to learn remotely or even in person. Just going to try it a couple more times and I'm going to ask if any of you need uh, any little bit of technical or advice or assistance. So, Kure Kayashi, men, so step back, left hand, left foot. Left hand comes over, right foot through. Kure Kayashi, men, right hand, right foot behind. Right hand comes down the Naginata, left leg step. Good. I've taken up to have a little bit of a drink or a bit of a break. How's everyone going with all of the techniques, whether it's the footwork, whether it's any of the strikes? Is there any questions people have or concerns? No? I'm always worried when everyone's quiet. It just makes me think either no one can hear me or no one wants to tell me what's going wrong. No, we can hear you, Em. It's all good. Um, I, I just don't have any questions because you've explained it. That's all. Are you, how are you feeling with the techniques? Uh, this is a general question for everyone. I think it, it's still muscle memory that I need to build, and I'm still, I need to slow it down so I can make it a bit smoother. I think that's, that's okay. where I'm coming from. Yep. That, that's just me. Other people might be a bit different. Don't worry about smoothness, that comes with time. And as you said, 
basically about starting to generate that muscle memory. Uh, anyone else have any thoughts, feedback, questions, queries, concerns? No, sort of the same thing as Effie said, where it's just very new and getting used to the motions. And yeah. even though it feels like there might be problems, it's stuff that sort of feels like as we get along with it, you'll just work it out of it. Okay. All right. Um, with the furukayashi, which is, as I said, is quite a difficult technique, how are people feeling with that? Is it starting to make a bit of sense, even if the body's not necessarily following along? Yeah? Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up there. That's okay. That's it. That's a really hard technique to learn remotely. So you're doing really well to be able to even try and do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to work through cut number one and two as the attack. So we have done these a couple of times in previous weeks. We're just going to reiterate it because it is putting some of your techniques together. So, Ipponme, which means the first one. Um, this one is demonstrating Furiagate Men and Hasto Sne. So, we start in Shura no Kumai. We are the attacker, so we're going to initiate this attack. So we're going to do Furiagate Men, so step through, Men. And now we're going to go into Hasto. So, bring our hands to the center, back hand to the ear, or the right hand. We're going to go Hasto Sne. Sne. Now with Carter, there is someone else doing techniques. They're going to do some stuff for a while. And when they're finished, we're going to pull our right foot back as we bring our left hand to the center. And then we're going to step forward with our left foot as our right hand comes back to the Naginata to bring us back to Chudan no Kamai. So that's quite an awkward position to see. So you're starting off with your snay here, with your right foot forward, right hand forward. All you do is you step back with that right foot. So you're pushing back here and you bring your left hand into the center of your weapon. And then as you step forward, you're just coming back to your normal, your basic Chura no Kamai. And from there, you're going to get walked back to the step. So, Hitch, Ni, San, Shi. This is an Ayumi Ashi step. So, uh, basically, what's happening in the meantime when you're waiting up Snay, um, your partner has blocked your men cut, they blocked your snake cut. You're down here on snake, they step off to the side and they do a men cut. They then retreat, coming back to Chuda. And it's at this point where you step back and then come into Chudan with them, and then they walk you back to the starting position. So it helps when you know what the other side of the technique is. But at the moment, let's just focus on the Shidachi technique. And then after a few goes, I'll actually act as the Uchi for you. Um, which is a bit harder because I can't see all of you at the same time, but it'll give you some idea of what's going on. So, if we start in Chura no Kamai, we're going to go Furiagate Men, so step through, Men, we're going to go into Hustle, Snare. We're going to wait here, have a little rest, have a little daydream. They go do their thing, they've stepped off behind us, they've come in and struck men, they've retreated. So our left hand is going to slide up to our right as we push back. And now our left hand and our left foot are going to come forward to meet them. And they're going to walk us back four steps. So Ayumi Ashi crossing left foot behind. Itch, ni, san, shi. Going to do that one again. So, ippon me, task number one. Furiagate me. Nem, hasso, sne. Nem. We wait, we breathe, they're off to the side, they've done a men cut, they've walked back, we push back off our right foot, left hand to the center, left hand and left foot forward, go back and shoot an and they walk us back four steps. Itch, me, sun, she. Okay, so this time I'm going to do the uchi roll. Um, obviously, I can't see you all, so I'm going to be telling you what you're doing, and I'm going to be trying to respond to that. So this just gives you an idea of what it should look like from the receiver. So if we're both in Shura no Kumai, you're going to step forward and you're going to do Furiagate Men as I block. You're going to go into Hustle and you're going to come down from my Sne, which is now visible, so Hustle Sne, and I block. You wait there in that Sne position. I'm going to step off to the side. I'm going to do Hustle Men. And then as I step back, I'm going to bring my Naginata down to your center as a bit of a threat. Now that I'm back here, you're going to step back, pull everything to your center, 
and then come back into Chuda no Kuma. And from here, I walk you back four steps. Itch, me, sun, chi. And that's equal. So my role as Uchi is to help you show up your technique as, as well as possible. This kata isn't about me. This kata is all about the attack. So you showing up your technique. At least for the first half. The second half, it's me showing that I am a great warrior and I am going to be weak. Sorry, that's how it goes. Uh, so we're going to run through that one more time. So we start in Shura no Kumai. So we're crossing our, our Naginata. You're going to come through and do Furiagate Men, and I block. You're going to come for my Sne, which happens to Hustle Sne, as I block. You're going to hold there. I'm going to step off the line. I'm going to do Hustle Men. I'm going to take two steps backwards, coming back to Chura, each knee, and then you're going to pull everything as you step back, and then come back into Chura. And I walk you back to center. Itch, ni, san, chi. How's that going for everyone? Does it make sense? Seeing it with the, the other partner? Does it help? Does it hinder? Good. All right. Okay. So that's it. That's ipumbe. So very, very simple text. I'm not going to teach you the uchi right now because obviously limited time. And it's not necessarily as much fun. Let's have a look at Nihome, so number two. So Nihome is basically a reversal for you. Instead of Furiagate Men, Hustle Sne, you're going to do Furiagate Sne, Hustle Men. The rest of the technique is actually pretty much the same for you. So we'll run through it together. So we start in, oops, wait, we'll pull that one out. Chura no Kume. We're going to do Furiagate Sne, so stepping forward and then coming into Sne. We're going to come into hustle. We're going to go for men. And again, we're just going to wait there. They're going to do their thing. They uh, step in, they attack slave, they move back. Again, we push off the right, right foot to the step back, bring the left hand to the center, step forward into Chuda Nokomai, and they're going to walk us backwards. Hitch, me, son, chi. So I'll do it facing you this time. So we do furiagate sne, so step through, sne, hustle, men. We wait. They step off behind us. They do hustle sne. They go back two steps, pointing at our center, at which point we step back, bring our hands together, and step forward. So we're back in Shura no Kumai. And again, our partner is going to walk us back four steps to center. Each knee. San, she. So you should end up pretty much where you started each time. We'll do that one more time. So, Furiagate Sne, step through. Sne. Hustle men. Sne. We wait and wait and wait and wait. They've done their thing. They've walked back. We pull back, nice and centered, straight back into Chura no Kumai, and four steps back. Hitch, ni, san. Chi. Okay. This time, I'm going to get you to continue doing those attacks. I'm going to be the uchi, so I'm going to be receiving your attack. So we start in Chuda no Kumai. You're going to go Furiagate Sne. So Furiagate Sne, I block. You're going to go into Hustle Men. So Hustle Men as I block. You're going to wait there. I step off the line with Nuite. I come up into Hustle. And I go for your sne, which is now open. You keep waiting there. I walk back two steps, each knee. And at this point, you pull back, bring everything to center, and then step forward into Chuda no Kumai. And I'll walk you back four steps, each knee, sun, chi. You notice I'm curving because in real life, we'd be off on an angle, but don't stress about it too much. Probably much easier if you use whatever forward direction you've got. Okay. We're going to do that again. So you're going to do furiagate ne. And now you're going to do hustle men. So you hold that position. I step off the line. I do hustle sne. Sorry, hustle men, my bad. I'm then going to step back two steps, each me. You're going to step back to the center. You're going to come forward, chudam. And we walk back, each me. 
sorry, I was mixing up one and two in my head for a second. This one I'm actually going for your, um, no, I'm going for your snake. It's very hard when I don't have a partner. My brain gets a bit fuddled. I do apologize. So the idea is with number one, which is Furiagate men, hustle snake. Um, so you've got Furiagate men, hustle snake. Your head is open. So they're going to attack this target, which is open. With Furiagate, uh, sorry, Nihon men, you're going Furiagate snake, hustle men, which has left your snake nice and open. And this explains why your uh, partner is going to go for that target. They're taking what is basically the easy option, uh, the easy target that you're presenting. How are we going with those two targets? So Ippome and Nihome. All kind of makes sense? Or any questions? So could we run through them both one more time? Is that okay? Absolutely. Would you prefer, is it easier if I do the receiver role or do you want me to run through the same role as you? For me, it was easier when I could see how you were reacting, so it would be easier for you to be the receiver, but other people might be a bit different. I'm not seeing or hearing any objections at this point, so I'll still act as the receiver then. So I'll talk you through your, your attacks. So we start in Chuna. So you're going to come through, you can see my men is basically open, so you can do Furiagate men, and I will block. You're now, you can see my legs are open, so you're going to go hustle. Snake, I see you coming, and I block. You wait there, I step back, and I'm going for men. I retreat each knee. You pull everything back to center and then step forward into Chuda Nokuma. And I walk you through. Each knee, san, chi. We'll do ippon me again. So, furiagate men. Hasso. You wait. I do men. I retreat. Now you're going to step back, pull everything to center, and step forward into Chuda no Kumai. And I take you back four steps. Itch, ni, san, chi. We're going to look at ni home, which is the reverse. So, furiagate, sne, hustle, ne. So, furiagate, sne, a block. You can see my head's now open, so you're going to go hustle men. I block. You wait there as I retreat into hustle, and I go for your snare. I go back two steps, each knee. You pull back to center. You come forward into chudan, and I walk you back four steps. Each knee, san, chi. We'll do that again. So ni me number two. Furiagate, ne. Hustle, men, you wait, I go into hustle, I go for snap, and I withdraw. You now pull back everything to center, come forward into Chuda no Kumai, and I walk you back four steps. Each, ni, san, chi. Is that better? Or helpful at least? <laughs> if you're in the mute, mute button's always having a good fun. Oh, good uh, yeah, because I've got a whole lot of noise and you'll hear echoes. Um, that's okay. No, that's perfect. It's the timing and that made a lot more sense. Thank you. That's okay. I said it's a lot easier, obviously, when you have a partner. So sometimes um, I will spend some time trying to act as the other role. So you can kind of see what's happening and get a mental image, if, if nothing else. All right. So that's Ippome and Nihome. So we've learned a few basic techniques in there, mostly the strikes withdrawal. Uh, we haven't looked too many, much at the blocks. Um, but what I want to do is actually look at some techniques from number five. Now it seems odd that we're jumping to number five, but there are a few reasons for this. Um, number three incorporates more furi kayashi and it includes something called a makia toshi, which I don't want to put you through yet. Number four, um, it's nice, but it's not something I want to work on. But number five is continuation of three in many respects, but it has slightly simpler techniques in some ways. So I'm just going to demonstrate the attacking, um, what the attacker is doing. And then I'm going to show you what the receiver does because you're actually going to learn the receiver role, which is a bit of a change. So for number five, so go home, 
I'm acting as the attacker. I'm going to go into what we call what no which we have covered briefly, but not done a lot of. From this position, I'm going to go for door, which is basically this center part between the hips and the ribs, where all the nice internal organs are. So I'm going to step through and I'm going to attack the door. They're going to give me what's called a hurai, which is a little push by Magnata, which pushes me into Furikayashi, men, which they block. They're going to then do a technique which knocks my weapon out of the way, and then they're going to strike at the door. They step back, I bring my weapon underneath, and they walk me back four steps. Me, son, she. So one of the reasons I'm not teaching you this side is with the waki and the furikayashi, I don't want to put all of both of those on you at the moment. Um, so I'm going to teach you the receiver role. So the receiver role, there we're both in Shudan. They go into Wakinogumai. And for some reason they decided to try and attack my, my center. So I'm going to do something similar to the Sendan Maka block, which is done for men. Just that this one's a little bit lower to defend my center. So from Chudan, I step back, bring my Naginat in to defend my center. I'm going to do a technique which is called a harai, which is basically a way of deflecting someone else's weapon. So from here, my right hand is uh, based up my groin. My left hand is going to slide down the naganata while my right hand stays there. So you can see, it changes the angle. But as I do that, I'm also going to step back and push it out away from the body or um, in towards the leg, depending on which direction you go. In this case, I pull in. I'm going to bring my left hand in and I'm going to deflect behind me that way. This is a harai. So let the left hand slide in as you step back and your left hand will end up hitting your leg. And that's a harai. So that will turn them into furi kayashi and they're going to go for our men cut. So if we're already here, we're just going to step back and come up into our men block. <coughs> Their weapon is on our right side of the weapon. <coughs> What I'm going to do is quite a nice, what we call a torsion. <clears throat> so this is more than deflection, it's quite a powerful movement. And what's going to happen is my weapon is basically going to go from here to here. So from this hip down to this hip. But as I do that, I'm changing sides. So this is, this is a few different techniques here, but literally if you step forward and just bring, change the angle so the other hip is up and then step through, that's basically what we're doing. So don't worry if it doesn't come smooth. From here, we're going to pull our weapon through our hands. So we're up in this position. And then we're going to step forward to do the ski. So there's a quite a few new techniques here. So I'm just going to show you how we do those techniques, and then we'll see if we can chain them together after. So the first one, we're just going to look at that door block. So starting in Shura no Kumai, all we're doing is we're using our right hand to pull our weapon through. We're going to keep it pretty much at this level because that's uh, defending our center. So back from Chudan, right hand is going to pull the weapon through your left hand as you step back. So it is important you step back because you're moving your target over. So Chudan Okamai, step back. This is pretty common. Step back. Step back. So this is just how we're defending our center. A couple more times. So right hand pulls through, and then both of them squeeze to catch. Pull and squeeze. Pull and squeeze. Pull and squeeze. Last one. Pull and squeeze. Okay. So that's how we're defending the door. That's the door block. The next technique, and this comes from when we're in door block, is the harai. So We've done our technique to, to come back to block um, our door. Our left hand is going to pull down towards our leg, down towards our thigh. And as we do so, our left hand is sliding in the nagana. The right hand is basically acting as a fulcrum. So it stays against the body. It doesn't move except to kind of rotate a little bit. So this is the strength. This is giving you the angle. So from here, my left hand is going down towards Kind of towards my bum in angle. And what that does is it pushes their weapon, which would be here, it pushes it down when they can do furikayashi men. So you're giving them the momentum for furikayashi men. 
so from the block, let the left hand slide in as you bring your left hand down towards the thigh. Block and down. Block and down. Block and down. Block and down. Once you start getting your straight, start stepping back at the same time. This gives you more power. It helps with the directionality. It doesn't have to be a big step, but this will help power your horizon. So as long as that left hand is coming in towards you, so your hands are getting a lot closer than shoulder width, that'll help with the hurai. The step back gives you some space and helps, again, power that hurai. A couple more. Okay. That's the hurai. So this is the one that should be feeling a little bit more stressed now because it's been a little bit stiff and holding in place. This one is just sliding up and down the Naginabu. Um, so it's just giving guidance, giving angle. We can do it to the other direction, so we can do it forward if we want to send the attack the other way. So you can do it to the back, you can do it to the front. Either works. You can also do it up from men as well. So Harai is quite a nice little thing. All right, so we've done the Harai. They come back, they block men. Oh, sorry, we're blocking men. From here, we're going to do this Okoshi technique. So all that's happening, and I will pull up... These again, so you can see what my legs are doing. A lot harder in the Hakama. So you get my lovely Hakama diaper effect again. So we're here, we're blocking men. So we're, we're pretty much up here. So that Sendan Maki block, very similar to the door one. It's just it's now sitting up a little bit higher to protect our head. So from here, what's going to happen is so my left leg is forward, is I'm going to step back with my left foot and forward with my right. Uh, sorry, not forward. Um, so forward with the right foot, and then the left foot comes back. So we're basically doing furikayashi. That footwork we're doing, sorry, fumikayashi. Fumikayashi and furikayashi, for some reason, they have two terms very similar, and they mean very different. So all we're doing is we're stepping forward and back. So I feed my feet a little bit more. Forward, left foot back. Forward, left foot, right foot back. So you start with the left foot forward. The right foot comes up to meet it, so squeeze the legs together. The left foot pulls back into your normal or, or your other hummy or kamai. So from here, right foot forward, left foot back. And if you think about the left hip dragging back at the time, that'll help power your motion as well. So that's the legs. What the arms are doing from this block is they're going up and across. So it's a bit hard to show you from here, but as I step forward, it comes up and across. So the butt of your weapon, which is down at the bottom, is going to basically go straight up onto the angle. So from here, up. So for the chudan, oh, sorry, tendra maki block, left hand, left foot forward. Bring the left hand down to your hip. Let your right hand bring the weapon up. So you're actually rotating it around your center, which again, if your hips are moving fast, if you're doing communication marks fast, it makes this a very powerful weapon. So their blade is here, they're going smack and throw it, basically pitching it all the way off the side. So from here, right foot forward and through. Come back. So left hand, left foot forward, turn and through. Back to the block and forward and through. And again, in the block, step in and through. How are we going so far? That's a few different techniques I've thrown at you there so far. How, how's the brain? How's the body? Just trying to figure out uh, how far you're supposed to sort of go or hold arms. Uh, That's okay. Don't stress too much about that at the moment. Um, ideally, what you're trying for is not to open yourself up too much. So this is quite close into my body. So my elbow is in against the body. So it's really just come past my head on this side. You can technically go right out, but I tend to find that's a little bit of a broad movement. Um, I don't find it powers quite as well. And it means that you have to come back in center 
So I prefer just to use my the center of my body. So literally, I'm just rolling it over my belly to generate some of that power. And because they're weapons basically at the center here, so they're weapons here, bang. I don't need to go far. Okay? That makes sense? But again, don't worry if it is going further out. It's a big issue right now. Any other questions about any of those techniques? The block, the harai, the atoshi? Uh, just getting from when you um, harai, harai, just to the next block, which is the men block. Um, if, if uh, yeah, just as part of that sequence. I haven't actually covered it yet because I, I, um, I am going to. I promise. Oh, I promise. Okay. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Don't apologize. It's, it's a very good point. I've just taken it straight from one block to a completely different one for the other portion. But I just kind of want to break down the few little techniques and then we'll string them together. So I'm, I'm just going to cover the ski and then we're going to see how all those building blocks come together into one thing. Uh, so it was a very good question from Michael. So we've done our otoshi. So we've now got our right foot forward, our, our right hand is higher. What we're going to do is our left hand is going to come up towards our shoulder, pulling the naganata through. So we go from here, left hand comes up to sort of shoulder height. It's long, it's straight. So it's a nice, powerful position. And all we're going to do is do a little otoshi, uh, sorry, a kuriyash forward, mixing up all my terms today. But as we do that, we're going to circle the weapon around. So it's making a bit of a semicircular round and down. So the left hand stays in its position. The weapon slips through the right hand. And this allows us to do what's called a door ski. So it's a thrust directly to your center using the um, Ishizuki or the stone breaker, which if you recall, in the, old, in the actual weapon, Sometimes it would actually have like a strike on it. It would definitely be metal. So it's quite a powerful bit of kit. Um, and we only use it under very certain, certain circumstances in Upper Russian Naganata because it is a bit dangerous. But in this one, the idea is that you're thrusting towards the center. When you're doing the technique with a partner, you're actually trying to stop a fist width away from their body. So obviously you don't need to worry about that right now, but it's about control. So. Let's come back from um, the tendon marker block. So hands up near the top of the naginata. We're blocking here. Our left foot is forward. We're going to do that atoshi. So the right foot comes forward. We rotate the naginata across the body. From here, we're going to let our left hand rotate up to our shoulder and our right hand comes down to our thigh. And then we're going to step through and bring the ebu or the ishizuki down by our right hand up into center. And that's our door. Do that again. So from the stand unmarked block, right foot comes forward as we rotate the weapon. We're going to bring our left hand up to our shoulder. Right hand's going to slide in towards the thigh. And then as we step forward, we're going to push the Ishizuki up towards their center. One more time. So block. Right foot comes to the front, exchange side. We pull the left hand up with the ski preparation. And then we step forward and push the naginata through the doors. From there, we're going to walk two steps right. So we're going to do like a little ayumiashi, but we're going to pull the naginata through. So from here, we pull it with our left hand as we step back. Let's start chaining all of this together now. Um, so it'll make a little bit more sense to what's happening. Hopefully. So we start in Chura no Kumai. Our partner is going into Waki no Kumai and they're striking towards our door. So we pull with our right hand to block the door. Their weapon is now on the left of ours, so it's on this side of our weapon. We're going to do a harai, so our left hand is going to come down towards our left thigh as we step back. That's as furi kayashi men, so they're coming for our head. <clears throat> we step back and bring the weapon up to block men. <clears throat> From here, we're going back to that atoshi. 
So we bring our right foot to our left as we bring our weapon up and across. We're then going to bring our left hand up towards our shoulder in ski preparation. And then we're going to thrust through as we step forward. Our left hand is now going to throw the weapon behind us as we step two steps behind each knee. From here, so from here, we're going to pull our um, present about how we do this from here. We're going to step, bring our, our left foot forward as we bring our naginata over the top, and we step back into chuda. And then we're going to walk back four steps. Each knee, sun, chi. So that's the full combination for the receiver for gohom or number five. Don't worry if it just doesn't stick in the brain. This one takes a little while, but I'm just trying to give you a few new techniques to try out. And it really helps in this one, guys, seeing how they actually work together. So we start in Chura Nokumai. They're coming for door, so we pull back with our right hand as we step back and we protect our door. We're going to give them a harai, so our left hand as we step back is going to come down to our left leg. They're coming for our men, so we're going to step back again and bring our blade up to protect our head. We're going to bring our right foot forward as we rotate foot washi. Our left hand is going to come to our shoulder and our right hand comes to our thigh. And then we're going to step through and do a door. Go. We're going to pull back with the left hand. So throw the naginata from the left hand as we step back. Each knee. Bring the left foot forward as the naginata comes to the center. Right foot back. Should I knock my? Four steps back. Each knee, sun, chi. So that's four hormones. You notice I'm doing kind of a circle. I'm just trying to show you what all the techniques are. Uh, you would normally be doing this in a much straighter line. So we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to do it straight onto you so you can see it from this angle. M, just we, one point. Hey, sure. You, at the end, you need to walk forward, not back. You're pushing. Oh, yes, I'm watching. Ha! <laughs> Good point. Thank you, Michael. So I'm so used to doing the other role, my brain has got strong. So yes, in this one, you will actually be walking them backwards and Pushing. you're going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, Michael. Um, so we're going to do that again. So we're going to do go from there again uh, with you as a receiver. And then I'm going to actually uh, swap roles and show you what the attacker is doing so that you can receive all the uh, attacking. So again, I'm still doing the same role as you. We're both receiving. We're in Chika Nokumai. They're coming for door, so we pull with our right hand as we step back and block our center. We're going to step back and we're going to horizon. So right foot steps back, we horizon. They're coming for men. We step back and bring the naginata up to defend men. We're going to step forward with the right foot and a tosh. We're going to bring our left hand up to our center, up to our shoulder, letting our right hand slide through. We're going to step through now and thrust to their center. As we step back two steps, we're going to pull the naginata throughout with our left hand. So, each knee, left foot forward, naginata comes over the top, back into Chudanokumai. And as Michael pointed out, we walk four steps forward. Each knee, sun, chi, so that we're back where we started. Very nice catch, Michael. It didn't even occur. So, this time around, I'm actually going to do the attacker role so that you can see what you're defending against and what you're reacting to. We are going to do this quite slowly. So, we're both in Chura no Kumai. I'm going into Waki no Kumai. Now, get ready to step back and defend your center because I'm coming to the door. So, you can see this should be blocking or uh, meeting at the door. You're going to do her right. So, you're going to push my weapon down this way as you step back. So, you push your weapon. I come into Kurikayashi and go men, so you're stepping back to block. From here, you're going to do your tosh. So you're going to step forward with the right foot, and you're going to smack my naginata out of the way, which is left fist open. You're going to pull your left hand up to your shoulder, right hand to your thigh, and then you're going to step forward and strike or thrust to my door. From here, you're going to step back two steps, throwing your weapon through from your left hand. You're going to bring your left foot forward as your magnetic comes over the top. I'll bring mine down to get yours. And then you're going to walk four steps forward. 
each name. No, shoot. We're going to do that again, and then I'm just going to see if there's any questions. So, we're in Chuda Nokmai. I go into Waki. You're going to step back and defend your center. You're going to step back as you hurrah, pushing my weapon down. You're going to step back and block your head. You're now going to bring your right foot forward and do an otoshi. So you're going to throw my weapon out of the way. You're going to bring your left hand up to your shoulder, right hand to your thigh, and then you're going to step forward and thrust my door. You're going to take two steps backwards and throw your naganata through by your left hand. Step forward with your left foot, naganata coming over the top. You meet at Chudan, and you're going to walk me backwards. So you're going to step forward four steps. Hitch, knee, sun, chi. Okay. How are we going? Mental gymnastics, physical gymnastics. How's it all doing? Good. The sequence went well. Yeah, yeah, I think. How about for those who are a little bit newer to it? Yeah. Um, Tom, uh, Effie, Emma. Trying to make some sense? Does it help if I'm doing the other role? It actually yeah. really helps when you're doing the other role. Sorry, Tom, I didn't quite catch what you said. Oh, no, I just sort of agreed. And, yeah, I was just going to say the blocks are kind of more fun uh, than some of the attacks, it feels like. Uh, what, the ones that I'm doing or the ones that you're doing? Uh, when we do the blocks, it feels like you do a lot more. Yeah. I rather thought you'd like that one. Again, that's another reason I chose number five. A Toshi makes a lot of sense. And it feels really nice when you get it. Just that rotation, it feels powerful. And it should feel powerful. But once you actually get the technique down, you're going to be using surprisingly little energy to make a really big effect. And that's one of the nice things about Naginata, because you use your body as your fulcrum, as your, um, your stability point. A lot of power can come from very little movement. So it's a wonderfully effective weapon. All right. So I don't expect you to remember all of that, especially not for next week. But the video will be up this afternoon, so you can check it out, redo it again, see how you go. We do, technically, we're at 12 o'clock, um, but I thought if anyone would like to try some waza, uh, which is basically, a, we're going to do an orgy waza, which is a, an attack and receiver sequence. So this is if you're with a partner. And this is basically you doing a block against my attack and then taking an opportunity to attack one of my body parts. So we're going to do a very standard one, which is called men's net. Was that? Because there is a man and a snake involved. So, from your perspective, you're going to start in Shudan no Kumai, like this. I'm going to attack men, and you're going to go, I ain't having any of that. You're going to bring your left foot back and bring your hands up to just below shoulder height. So this is a men block. So, I'm cutting down here. You're blocking with the center of your weapon between your hands. <clears throat> so, again, this is my right foot here, left foot here. My left foot steps back, and I bring my hands up. So I'm taking my head out of the target mode. So, men block. Look at two down, step back with the left foot, men block. From here, because my weapon's up here, all of my legs are open. So you're going to come from this position here, and you're going to step slightly off to the side with the left foot, and go snay. So it's not a full hustle. It's not furiagate. It's somewhere in between. This is more for Shi'i technique, so it doesn't have all of the structure. And positions of key points. So again, we step back and we block. We're going to step slightly out to the left, and our right hand is going to come down to our belly button as we aim towards the neck. So we're still bending on that front knee as we would for a normal step. So we start in shooter. Your partner comes to men, you step back and you block, and they go, ha ha, opportunity. Snake. So these techniques are about learning to block very quickly and then go straight into an attack. <clears throat> so don't worry if it's a bit slow now. As you get more used to it, you'll be able to do this faster and faster. So children off my men block, snare. Children off my left foot back, block, snare. Children off my left foot back, block, and snare. Children off my men block, and snare. 
So I'm going to make the attack now so you can kind of see what you would be um, seeing if you had a part. <coughs> so don't worry if you're not going at the same time as anyone else. You're all going to have slightly different lag. So when you see my men cut coming towards your head, um, I want you to step back and block and then take a pot shot at my leg. So we're in Shudo Nokumai. Men. Good, I can see some of you there. That's just really nice. Come back to Chuba. All right. Here we go again. Mem. Good. And again. Mem. All right. One more. Mem. Good. Very nice. Now, Ray, so your left foot comes back, your hands come together at your right side, left hand down towards your leg. Good job, everyone. I know it's not easy on Zoom and not easy when the weather isn't necessarily being your friend. Um, I hope you had some fun trying a little bit of that weather just to help you with some of the concepts. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning some bits from number five because I said there's some really interesting techniques in number five. And it's a bit more of a challenge um, than what we've been working on previously. So I'm just trying to build up on some of your skills uh, so that you can start chaining things together, and start getting a bit more of a, a smoother integration of all these techniques. But um, how are you all doing? Now that I've that was awesome, Em. I love number five. I'll, I'll get it, but it, it's a bit more complex than the other ones. But it was awesome. Oh, it, it's definitely a step up against number one and number two. But in terms of the techniques, Really fun techniques you get to learn in there. Getting to do Harai and Atoshi for the first time really feels nice. Um, and believe me, when you get to do it against a real person, it's so much more fun than that. Uh, <laughs> so it gives you something to look forward to. If you can convince anyone in your house to stand there with the mob so that you can practice Harai and Atoshi, do it. Um, <laughs> just, be, just make sure they're standing well at the back of the weapon or, or the mob. Um, so there's no danger of injury. Just do it slow, but it gives you that nice feel that it gets you to see what you're aiming at. If you can prop it up against a stair or a chair or something, again, you can get that nice feel of trying to move another weapon with a very small... All righty. Well, I hope you all had a good time. I hope you've not gotten too cold. Um, pretty sure we'll be in lockdown next week, so there will be another session next Saturday. Um, if any of you have any ideas or suggestions or things that you want to try or work on, and this goes for um, some of my uh, regular students, so like Liam, um, I know you've been out of uh, commission for a little while. If there's anything you want to have a look at or just talk about, let me know. That gets same goes for everyone else. And again, for all of you who are new to this, feel free to make suggestions. Anything that you want me to go over again, anything that's clear, or anything you just really enjoyed, um, I'm always happy to try and set up the session around that. Otherwise, we'll probably refresh on some of those new techniques next week. And then maybe a little bit more waza, because they're always fun. Um, and potentially looking at number three, which is very similar to number five. But again, there's going to be a new technique. Involved. All right, I'm going to stop the recording now, if I can see the stop. <laughs>